powerful to do anything that he deems worthy in our life. We have the opportunity to not let our determination be affected by our situation. We have the opportunity today to be able to stare that thing square in the face and declare unto it that there is a God who watches me. That there is a God who cares for me. That there is a God who loves me and will shelter me and guard me and keep me and complete that thing that he wants to do in my life and you have no right to be here I feel like somebody this morning understands exactly what I'm talking about there's somebody this morning that gets exactly where I'm coming from you might have found yourself there yesterday and you're looking at everything that's going on in your life you're looking at everything that's going on around you you're looking at everything that's going and affecting your brother and your sister. But you've determined. You've made sure. You've said in your mind that God will do exactly what he wants to do with you. We understand that prayer is vital, that prayer is crucial in the church's life. Uh, this, this, this portion in Acts 12 is a picture, it's a diagram of what the church must be. On the contrary, the church that chooses not to pray, uh, the church that chooses not to put a hands together and bow their head and their hearts unto a God is a church that is obviously trusting in something else. Uh, it's a church that uh, is trusting in something other than an omnipotent God. It's a church that's putting their faith in something other than the God of the eternal ages. It's a church that's putting everything and their trust into so we're gonna we got issues, we're gonna put it in a program. We we got issues in the church, we're gonna put it in some money. We got issues in the church, we're gonna find some investors and, and they're gonna save us. We got some sickness in the church, so we're just gonna send them down to the local hospital and watch the doctors do uh, what God cannot do. Uh, no, the fact of the matter is, is that that church um, uh, who trusts in something else uh, is on a road to destruction and disaster and defeat and disappointment. But the church of the living God today uh, who chooses to live uh, and pray unto a God uh, who hears always uh, and who answers always will never be disappointed, uh, will never uh, find themselves... Uh, crying over a loss. No, they are going to be the ones who will see a God manifest himself and glorify himself in a place, in a locale, in a location where he chooses to move because someone prayed unto him. We pray to you for your worthy. We pray to you because you're glorious. We pray to you because you're powerful. See, understand today that there truly is power in your prayer. There truly is something on the inside of your prayer. Your prayer is not simply words unto God. Uh, no, the fact of the matter is, is that your prayer has something, a, a potency in it that has the power to release the thing that you're praying for. Four. Uh, see, when the church in Jerusalem began to pray for Peter, their prayer was more powerful than the chains that were on his wrist. See, see, when they began to pray, the power that was in the prayer was more powerful than the lock that was on his wrist. That prayer went into the lock and... An 
and opened that thing. It, 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 it issued forth on the inside of that chain and opened it loose. And then the angel wakes him up. The prayer initiated the opening and then the prayer and then the angel wakes him up and says, let's go. There's a power in your prayer that's getting ready to unlock and unleash every single thing that's been binding you and blocking you because there's power in a prayer of a righteous man the bible says huh, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much for the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous huh, and his ears are open unto their cry there is a power in your prayer today The prayer that you pray, while we know it's powerful, while we know it has the power to unlock your chain and the chain of your neighbor. The prayer that you pray must not be a one-time thing. Uh, the prayer that you pray cannot be um, something that you do just in the morning. Uh, the prayer that you pray cannot be something that you do just at lunchtime. And hopefully you all pray for your lunch. <laughs> it's not just something you do at dinner or at bedtime one time a day or one time a week or one time a month or one time a year or one time a decade. Uh, no, the fact of the matter is, is that the prayer that you pray unto a God who is able and that power which contains a power, the prayer that contains a power, has to be used and issued forth and issued out of your mouth every single day that you live. Uh, it has to be something that is continuous. It, it has to be something that does not cease. It has to be something that does not stop. It, it has to be something uh, that does not cease once your mouth closes. No, once you issue the prayer out of your mouth, then your spirit must keep praying the prayer that just came out of your mouth. You have to get to the point where every Every single day and every hour of your life, there is prayer coming out of you. There's intercession coming out of you. I, I intercede at, at, at work. I, I intercede at lunch. I, I intercede on the way home in traffic. I intercede at dinner. I intercede while I'm watching television. I intercede until the last moment that my mind is cognizant of my awakenedness. I intercede constantly and continuously because I know that when I intercede constantly, that God is so somehow, some way, at some point in my life, I'm going to hear my prayer. If I don't stop, if I don't give up, that God is going to do for me and the thing that I could not do for myself. There is something powerful about your continuous prayer. We got to get to the point in our life where nothing stops our prayer. Or where nothing blocks our prayer. When nothing sits down our prayer or pushes back our prayer or, or, or waylays our prayer. No, we got to get to the point where we look at hell had a right in the face. Come hell or high water, any issue, any problem, any trial, any persecution, tribulation, uh, me lay uh, and say, you know what? You ain't going to stop my prayer. You ain't going to block my prayer. There's something that's going to keep issuing forth from me and it's prayer and it's going to deal directly with you let me just stand on the side just for about 30 seconds nothing can stop your prayer the thing that you are dealing with right now is absolutely terrified of your prayer the thing that you find yourself dealing with and battling with every single day of your life is an absolute horror of your prayer because it knows the power that's in your prayer. It knows the glory that's in your prayer. It might faint like it's bold. It might fake like it's strong. But the fact of the matter is, is that that thing is looking at you going, I hope this person doesn't pray to a God who already, who already has authority over me because because if they do, I got to go. If they do, I got to sit down and I can't never come back. Now, we 
going to deal with something now. Not only is prayer heard by God, not only does prayer have power in it, not only does prayer have the responsibility for it to be, to, for it to stay continuous and, and, and constant, not only is a thing that, that is messing with you uh, fears your prayer, uh, but there's another dimension and there's another dynamic to your prayer. And it's this, is that as we pray in the physical, as we pray with our mouth, as we pray with our mind, as we look at the situations and scenarios that plague us every single day and bring that to God, not only does uh, our prayer issue forth unto God, uh, but there is a transaction that must take place. There, there is a shifting that takes place when our physical prayer uh, is issued forth unto an eternal God. And the realization, the fact of the matter is this, is that a natural prayer uh, sets the stage for a supernatural context of divine activity. Uh, the fact of the matter and the truth, if I could break this one down for you is that once you issue forth a, a, a physical prayer God will then begin to release something in the supernatural that you could not do in the physical there is something about your prayer that steps beyond the physical that goes beyond the physical that leaps over the physical and the carnal and the mortal your prayer goes into a realm of the supernatural it begins to unlock things and unlock Unleash things and break things loose in the supernatural for God to do something supernatural in your life. He'll take the natural and put some super on it and you'll stand back in amazement and awe as to what God did. You might question, was it me? No. Was it my prayer? Not necessarily. Was it the wit of my mind and the brilliance of my psyche? No. It was the fact that you took a, a physical prayer and it translated and stood on the platform of a supernatural activity in your life the very thing that you are going to pray for is the thing that's going to be touched by supernatural activity uh, there's going to be the spirit of the living God that's going to put his finger on something he's going to put his finger on that issue he's going to put his finger on that problem he's going to put his finger on that scenario on that dilemma that you've been dealing with and fighting with every single day of your life and there's going to be a shift and a transition of supernatural activity in the spirit and it's simply going to be because you prayed unto the God who is able and the spirit of God that dwells on the inside of you is the one who is shifting and moving and blocking and sitting down every single thing that's not supposed to be there I got new for you this morning there is a God who is willing and ready and able to do something in your life supernatural something invisible something intangible that you cannot think of or dream of or imagine but he's gonna do it for you simply because you chose to pray to him my God, I'm almost done. I didn't think I could do it. <laughs> let, let me tell you very quickly a story about the power of prayer. Let me take you back to a date, February 15th, 1983. Where a man walked into a church who was bound where a man walked into a church who was addicted, where a man walked into a church who had the hands of the adversary over his life. He walked into a church thinking it would be the very last time he'd ever walk in there. And as a preacher prodded with him and pleaded with him to come to the altar, he said no. 
preacher pleaded again and begged of him again to come. He said, will you just come to the front and pray with me? And then I'll let you go. That sounded like a deal to him. He said, I can't beat this one. Okay. So he went up to the front and he knelt down in front of the preacher. And the preacher began to pray over him. And nothing happened. The preacher went off into the corner and began to pray to God. But while he prayed to God, something took place. The people in that church began to pray. The people in that church began to intercede. Uh, that the, the people in that church began to open their mouths and cry out unto a God who is able to save and deliver. And that church began to cry out and scream out and shout out and beg to God for the spirit of deliverance in that place. To hit that man, to set him free from every chain and every bondage that plagued his life. They began to pray without ceasing. They began to pray without stopping. They began to pray with a prayer that is issued forth from the realms of heaven. It is in that prayer that a sound of Pentecost came forth. It was a scream and a cry that set hell on notice. It was a prayer that let the enemy know that he had no more place in that man's life. And as that prayer continued to be prayed, the chains began to fall off and the bonds began to fall off and everything that held that man and down began to fall off of him like flint burning in the fire ah, I got news for you that man was gloriously and marvelously set free and that man is sitting on this front row today he is your pastor that is pastor Danny D'Angelo and the prayers of the saints released him from the clutches of the adversary and now he is preaching the gospel to literal thousands all over the globe simply because of your prayer and of their prayer that I got news for you this morning there is power 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 that is in your prayer never doubt your prayer never look at your prayer as nothing your prayer has power to release every captive and every person from the chains that they're in Everyone be seated, I'm done. Where did that come from? <laughs> Nothing could have seemed more helpless and useless than the prayer of the saints to get Peter out. God says, pray, and we say, why? God says, talk to me about it, and we say, why? God says, just, just open your mouth. Just tell me everything that's going on. Just tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're going through, and we say, why? There's going to be absolutely nothing good that's going to result of the prayer that I give unto you. I've talked to you before. I, I, I shared with you before, and I'm still living in this thing. God says, just tell me one more time. Just, just pray for that person just one more time. Just open your mouth and talk to me about that person just, just one more time. I'm challenging you just to talk just one more time and watch what I'm going to do if you do it that one more time. I got news and a challenge for you. If you bring that thing to God and that person to God just one more time, he's going to get ready to do something in the midst of that situation that you never dreamed possible. He's going to step in and manifest himself in a way that you never dreamed possible.
possible because you chose to take him at his word. You chose to believe him. You chose to obey him. And you chose to bring that thing unto him. And he said, you did it that one last time. Watch what I'm going to do now. Watch how I'm going to surprise you now. Watch the thing I'm going to drop in your life and in their life simply because you gave it to me that one last time. I got news for you. There's a one more time prayer in this place for someone in your life. There's something in this place that God is, is putting his finger on. And he said, just give it to me one more time. If that's you, and there's something or someone, excuse me, in your life that you want to pray for. There's someone, who's, there's someone who's bound. There's someone who's locked. There's someone who has found themselves in captivity and can't get out. I believe with everything that I have on the inside with me that God is going to get ready to unlock that person from the prison they're in simply because you prayed one more time. Everyone stand on your feet in this place. Start praying in the spirit. Think of that one person, that one person in your life who can't get out. Mental bondage, emotional bondage, physical bondage, psychological bondage, spiritual bondage. The adversary is, is arrayed against him and he can't get loose. Bring that person to God. Bring that person to God. Show, show God who that person is. Uh, uh, show God who that person is. Uh, say, God, I give this one to you. I present him or her before you. God, I am showing you the chains that are on his wrist right now. And I'm asking God that by the power of your spirit, you would unlock those chains on him. That they would drop like so much lead and so much steel that they would that they would resound on the golden streets of your kingdom. God set them free even now. Everyone pray this prayer out loud with me, dear God. I come to you now. I come to you with this person. I show you the chains. I show you the bonds. I show you the bondages. I give unto you, God, everything that's chaining his or her life. And I ask God that you would set them free. chains would drop off of their life by the power of your spirit I give them to you now for you 
and you alone can do it. I declare and I decree that in the name of Jesus, they are free. Say this out loud and we're going to praise God. Say they are free. Praise God in this place.